Welcome to another edition of Charting Basics. Today we're just going to ask the simple question, what is a chart? What does it do? Charts are everywhere. We use them to keep tabs on how our children are growing and how we group ourselves demographically and what the weather is going to be for the next few days. Whenever we show how something changes over time or how it breaks down into its component parts, we are using charts. In the investment world, we usually chart price movements over time. And technical analysis starts with this basic concept and works up from there. You've heard the expression, a picture is worth a thousand words. Technical analysis is based on the premise that in order to know where prices are going, we must know where they have been. And that means knowing how they got to where they are. In the early days of stock trading, you had to read the tape. But now, of course, we can use just a chart that's on our screen and access a whole history of data. By plotting the closing prices of stocks or other instruments on paper or a computer screen, we can see at a glance not only what the price of the stock is, but how it got there and what path it took. Any stock could be reported at a certain price, but you don't know what that means. Uh, a price of 65 up a half, what does that mean? But if you knew it was 60 last week and 50 the week before, you get an idea of what the trend might be. So what good is that? Knowing if a market is moving up or moving down helps investors buy only those issues that have the odds stacked in their favor. The bottom line in all markets, whether they are financial, real estate, or breakfast cereal, is that when demand is greater than supply, prices will rise. A chart with a positively, positively sloped price line is exhibiting excess demand, and it's far better to buy a stock when demand is greater than supply than the other way around. The chart you see now goes way back to 1995 and it's one of my favorite examples of trend. If you look, you see that in the beginning of the year the trend was to the upside, no surprise there, and then later it was to the downside. But the point is that a price of say 36 over here on the way up is good and here we have a price of 36 on the way down. Same price, different trend. And take a look at this. Right there, we can see that the price went through this level. Now, this is arbitrary. We didn't know anything about this in advance. And came up and failed at that price. So anything below this level confirms that the trend is down. So what might have been cheap over here in the beginning of the year is expensive at the second half of the year. Same price, different trend thing is we don't we don't know what's going to happen in the future all we can do is ask probabilities we don't have a crystal ball and no technician can really say I know what's going to happen if they do that they're really not being truthful what we're doing here is we're applying the principle that people tend to do the same things in similar situations and also from physics trends tend to continue inertia same thing as in physics so what we're going to do now is take the same chart and we're going to put a trend line on it starting from a logical low and we can see that this trend line touches the price action several times and now I'm going to get rid of this other line so what we have is a rising trend now of course it got a little out of whack here but when it came down, it touched the trend line, bounced mildly, and then broke through it. So at this point, you have confirmation that the trend had changed to the downside. That doesn't help you up here, but in the big picture, if you were coming into this chart at the end of the year, around in here, you would say, you know, this is not cheap. The trend is to the downside. Let's bring this forward to the, to the little more modern uh, modern time frame and this is the oops actually this is still micron but it's good let's use something that everyone is familiar with the healthcare ETF and obviously it's very easy to spot a rising trend here and of course later in 2015 something changed we can quantify that somewhat with a trend line 
start there, run through some bottoms or lows, and it doesn't have to be perfect. What it has to do is describe the action, and this line certainly does describe the overall trend for about two years. Price breaks through it, touches it one more time, and then a big fall. And then things change in October of 2015, another rally, and so far, the rally has failed at the old trend line. So what was a supporting trend line is now acting as resistance. Of course, we don't know what's going to happen in the future, but it appears that the healthcare ETF is in a declining trend. So the conclusion is that trends are not mysterious. They are tools that they keep, help us keep track of opportunities in the market. They can help us visualize what's going on and create our strategies. They don't predict the future, but they are definitely helpful in figuring out what we're going to do about it, buy, sell, or hold. And when you think about it, the decision to buy, sell, or hold is the only thing any of us can actually control when it comes to the markets.